The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Those famous words from Franklin D. Roosevelt ring as true today as when he first spoke them during the Great Depression. Fear is an enemy that threatens to hold us back, to keep us paralyzed, and prevent us from reaching our full potential. But I stand before you today to declare that we must conquer fear. We cannot let it control our lives or dictate our destinies. Fear is nothing more than a construct of the mind, a figment of our imagination. It is not real until we give it power over us. The fears we face, whether it's fear of failure, fear of rejection, or fear of the unknown, exist only in our thoughts. They are self-imposed prisons that trap us and limit what we can achieve. But you were meant for greater things than to live in fear. You were put on this earth to live lives of passion, purpose, and boundless possibility. The only thing standing in your way is yourselves, and the fears you allow to take root in your minds. I'm going to let you in on a secret that has transformed my life and the lives of millions. Fear is an illusion that can be shattered by taking action. The most successful people in this world are not those who were born fearless. They are the ones who felt the fear and pushed through it regardless. They are the artists who dared to create, the entrepreneurs who took great risks, the leaders who had the courage to challenge the status quo. When we take action, when we move forward boldly despite our fears, Something remarkable happens. The fears that once loomed so large begin to shrink and fade away. They lose their power over us. And in that moment, we realize our fears were just phantoms, shapeless monsters that could never harm us unless we surrendered our spirit to them. I'm reminded of a young woman named Emily who came to one of my seminars years ago. Emily had dreamed of starting her own business, but her fear of failure was so paralyzing that she could never take the first step. In our session on slaying fear, I told Emily something that may surprise you. I urged her to go ahead and fail. I told her that failure is not the monster we make it out to be, but simply a stepping stone to success. You see, the people who enjoy the greatest success are not those who never failed. They are the ones who failed more times than they can count, but kept pushing forward, kept learning from their mistakes, until they finally broke through. Failure is simply a lesson to be learned, not a permanent state of being. Emily left the seminar with a newfound resolve, and within a year, her business was launched. Did it succeed on the first try? Of course not. She made mistakes. She faced setbacks. She failed over and over again. But each time she picked herself back up, tweaked her approach, and soldiered on. Today, Emily's business is thriving because she defeated her fear by taking action. That's the simple secret that will set you free. Taking action in spite of your fears. Every time you feel afraid, hesitant, paralyzed, that is your signal to move boldly forward, to charge straight through the defensive lines fear has formed around your mind. When you take action, the fears melt away. When you run from fear, it grows in strength and persists. I want you to call to mind the specific fears holding you back right now. What is that dream you've kept locked away? The desire you've been too afraid to pursue? Whatever it is, realize this truth. The longer you allow that fear to linger, the harder it becomes to move past it. Every day you remain paralyzed is another day your dreams slip further away. So I challenge you today, in this room, to commit to facing your fears head on. To make today the day you declare your freedom from the mental chains you've allowed to bind you. To make the decision that from this moment forward, you will live in a constant state of bravery and forward momentum. It won't be easy, I can promise you that. Our fears have a nasty way of resurfacing, of finding new forms and new excuses to hold us back. But you have to keep taking action regardless. You have to keep putting one foot in front of the other on the path to your goals and dreams. When the fears arise, seal them fully. Then charge straight through them like a bowling ball crashing into pins. That is how you kill fear. It's not enough to just overcome it once. You have to keep slaying it day after day, fear after fear, until bravery becomes your predominant state of being. I think back to when I first started out in the world of business and sales. I was crippled by fear of rejection, terrified of putting myself out there only to be turned away. Until one day, it hit me that I was allowing the fear of a temporary rejection to rob me of permanent success and freedom. From that day forward, I made a pact with myself that I would charge fearlessly ahead, knowing that every no just brought me one step closer to a yes. Until I reached the point where I could hear no a hundred times, and keep smiling and moving forward. That's what I want for you today. The ability to move so far past your fears that you truly become emboldened, 
unstoppable, fearless in the face of any obstacle. This takes work, it takes daily practice and commitment, but you can get there, and the rewards are infinite. Imagine waking up each morning brimming with enthusiasm, excited for the day ahead instead of weighed down by fear and anxiety. Imagine striding confidently through your days, never held back by self-doubt, but taking chances and swinging for the fences at every opportunity. Imagine looking back at the end of your life, and having zero regrets because you chased after every dream that set your soul on fire. This is the life of bravery and freedom available to every one of you in this room. But you have to be relentless in slaying the fears that would hold you back. You have to be ruthless in dismantling the self-imposed mental prisons that confound you. From this day forward, I want you to adopt a zero-tolerance policy when it comes to fear. Do not negotiate with it. Do not allow it a foothold in your mind. The instant fear arises, walk straight through it. Burn that bridge behind you so you can never retreat back to your former life of playing it safe and small. The path to greatness, the path to realizing your highest human potential, demands bravery and bold, consistent action. There is no other way. So let's make a pact today to revere and pursue bravery the way others worship passive safety. Become affronted at the very thought of allowing fear to dictate your decisions and derail your dreams. And if ever you need inspiration along the way, look to those who exemplify true bravery. Look to the entrepreneurs who risked everything to build business empires from scratch. Look to the artists who bared their souls to the world, expressing their inner truth without restraint. Look to the leaders who had the audacity to challenge injustice and drive humanity forward. These are your role models in slaying fear. These are the ones who lived their highest truths and created extraordinary lives and impacts in the face of resistance and doubt. They did not have some special gene for courage. They simply made a choice each and every day to take action and never let fear stop their forward momentum. That same choice is yours to make today. What will your legacy be? Will you go to your grave with your deepest dreams unfulfilled, having allowed fear to rob you of your birthright as a limitless human being? Or will you rise up, slay your fears, and spend your days in a state of bravery and constant growth? The path is yours to choose, but I promise you, Nothing, not wealth, not status, not any material possession, will ever be as precious as the feeling of freedom that comes from slaying your fears and walking the path of your own bravery. To live fearlessly is to truly live. It is to experience human existence at its fullest, juiciest level. So kill your fears once and for all, be done with them. Let this day be a declaration, the first page of the next incredible chapter of your life. Use your fears not as stop signs but as flashing signals urging you forward through the resistance. Make bravery your fuel, and let it launch you into the stratosphere of greatness you were destined to reach. Do this, and I promise your life will become bolder, more vibrant, more fulfilling than you can possibly imagine. You'll experience levels of personal and professional achievement that seemed laughable when you were trapped in the shackles of your fears. An extraordinary new life awaits you in the realm of courage and forward momentum. The path is open. Fear is merely an illusion to walk through. Let's cross that threshold together, you and I, and leave our legacy in this world as people who attacked life head-on and roared to greatness in spite of any risk or doubt. The greatest enemy you will ever face is not a person, circumstance, or external force. It is the internal enemy of fear itself. Fear is an insidious force that lives within your mind, planting doubts, stoking anxiety, and holding you back from your highest potential. But you have the power to be the slayer of your own fears, to look this enemy straight in the eye and emerge victorious. It takes practice, it takes diligent mental training, but you can rewire your brain to respond to fear not with paralysis, but with profound bravery. One of the most effective ways to kill fear is to starve it of what it craves, your belief in its illusions. Fear perpetuates itself by getting you to buy into its deceptions about the risks and worst-case scenarios involved in going after your dreams. It wants you to think that playing it safe is the only sane option, when in reality, the greatest risk is playing so small that you never know what you're truly capable of achieving. So pull back the curtain on fear's tricks. See its shadowy stories for what they are. Fiction, not reality. Those worst-case scenarios it loves projecting almost never come to pass. And even if they do, the human spirit is far more resilient than fear gives it credit for. You can survive and thrive through any setback or failure, when you have an unshakable belief in yourself. 
Disbelief is what will fuel your courage and propel you through fear's flimsy barriers. It's what allowed the great ones, the innovators, visionaries and trailblazers of this world, to persist in creating their dreams despite being told time and again they were delusional. They knew the truth that fear tries to obscure, that you are stronger and more powerful than any doubts, regardless of where they originate. So make a daily practice of starving your fears while nourishing your self-belief, your bravery, your commitment to growth. Read and listen to the stories of heroes who refuse to let fear dictate their lives. They will inspire you and show you that you too can walk that path. Visualize yourself succeeding, thriving through any challenges that arise, emerging stronger on the other side of adversity. This mental training is what separates those who live lives of timidity from those who live lives of audacity and greatness. And whenever fear inevitably rears its head, which it will, as it's a part of being human, resist the urge to fight it head on. Counterintuitive as it may sound, fighting fear often gives it more power. Instead, allow the fear to exist, feel it fully in your body, then lovingly let it go as you take action on your goals anyway. Energy flows where focus goes, so placing all your focus on the fears often reinforces them unconsciously. The simple act of feeling the fear and keeping your gaze locked on your vision is what will ultimately erode the grip of fear. Because at its core, fear cannot exist in the present moment. It is rooted in the imagined past and projected future that your mind creates. When you bring all of your energy into the now, into the next step forward, fear evaporates, and you move purely from a place of courage. This is how you slay the fear of failure, the fear of rejection, the fear of taking risks, the fear of leaving your comfort zone, by bringing all of your consciousness into the next courageous action, the next bold step. With each successive action you take, the fears will scream at you less and less, until you reach the point where their voices are tiny whispers drowned out by the cheers of your successes. And don't be fooled into thinking that fearless people were simply born that way. Courage is not a gene. It's a muscle that anyone can build and strengthen over time through daily discipline. Practice of facing what scares you bit by bit, and expanding your comfort zone. The most successful entrepreneurs were not born braver than you. They're simply people who trained their bravery and mastered slaying their own fears around risk and failure. The great artists were not born more courageous. They simply became skilled at disarming the fears that could prevent them from expressing their truest creative selves. Leaders achieve greatness by repeatedly developing the brave muscle of speaking hard truths and challenging the status quo in the face of fear. You have that same potential within you, an infinite well of courage ready to be unlocked by consistent action, mental training, and the decision to no longer negotiate with your fears. So take stock of your own feared things, list the specific phobias, anxieties, and hesitations keeping you trapped. Then commit to chipping away at that list day by day. Maybe it starts with something small, like striking up conversations with strangers if you have social fears, or finally getting started on that side business idea, if the fear of failure has kept you paralyzed. No matter how small the first courageous step, take it, and watch how quickly the fears around that thing begin dissipating. Then take another step, and another, until bravery becomes your default response to any situation that arises in your life and endeavors. The path to a bold, extraordinary life is made up of tiny, incremental courageous actions that ultimately allow you to cross even the most daunting chasms of fear. Stay committed to that path, and a life of unshackled freedom, passion, and achievement can be yours. The hardest step is always the first one, the first time you look your fears in the eye and charge defiantly forward. But that first step is the launching point for building unstoppable momentum. With each successive win over your fears, your self-belief and courage grow exponentially. What once terrified you becomes a mere speed bump on the highway to your dreams. So start today, not tomorrow, in taking the first steps to dismantle the internal prison of your fears. Dare to be brave in some small way, even if every fiber of your anxiety is screaming at you to play it safe. Let that one brave choice be your declaration of an unbreakable commitment to slaying self-doubt, banishing timidity, and fully unleashing the highest potential version of yourself upon the world. From this point forward, Choose to unapologetically stand in your courage, no matter how turbulent the waters get around you. Make this your highest value, to walk the path that aligns with your biggest dreams and boldest truths, regardless of what fear tries to block that path. Let those fears shrink smaller and smaller behind you with each brave action you take.
They say courage is not the absence of fear, but feeling the fear and charging ahead anyway. Decide today that this will be your key, to let fear fully exist yet persistently overpower it by marching definitively forward in the direction of your dreams. Life will become a testament to the ultimate truth. You were never meant to merely exist. You were created for extraordinary feats, audacious adventures, growth, and self-actualization beyond your wildest imaginings. But only the brave and fearless get to experience this rarefied air. Only those willing to continually kill the internal enemies of doubt and timidity get to rise to the full expansion of what it means to be human. So, which path will you take from this day forward? Complacency or courage? Allowing your fears to run the show or relentlessly slaying those fears? The choice is yours, as it always has been. But I implore you, for the sake of the magnificent life awaiting you, jed your shackles once and for all, destroy the prison of your fears, and set yourself free to soar. One of the biggest myths fear perpetuates is that playing it safe is the route to comfort and security. The truth is, there is nothing safe about living a life shackled by your fears. Ironically, the real risk lies in letting fear run the show and deprive you of ever knowing your fullest power. Think about it. When was the last time you felt truly alive? Odds are, it was during a moment when you stepped outside your comfort zone, faced a fear head-on, and did something brave and audacious. Those peak experiences of aliveness and joy come from breaking free of your self-imposed limits, not staying stuck in stagnant safety. The human spirit craves growth expansion the thrill of new challenges and adventures living in fear starves your spirit and breeds emotional atrophy is that any way to live this precious one life you've been given the answer is no and deep down you know it let's get brutally honest with ourselves what fears have kept you trapped prevented you from experiencing more of the aliveness you crave is it the fear of failure that stopped you from finally launching that business or creative pursuit the fear of rejection that's kept you from pursuing the romantic partnership you want? The fear of being judged that shuts you down from expressing all of who you are? Whatever your fears, it's time to get ferociously real about the mediocre, shrunken existence they've allowed you to live. Maybe it's harsh, but a life of playing small and safe in the face of fears is a harsh existence in itself. One of regret, unexpressed potential, and a soul-crushing sense of just going through the motions. You were born for more than beige blandness. You were given divine gifts to express, a soul's calling to heed. Yet how can you ever live your fullest destiny when the chains of fear constantly hold you back? It's time to get downright furious about the prison you've allowed fear to create for you. Let that fiery rage at settling for the shackle life be your new fuel for dismantling its walls, brick by brick. Use that intensity of emotion as rocket fuel for courageous action. Channel it into facing the fears that have intimidated you for far too long. Because here's the other harsh truth. Your fears can never actually be eliminated or banished altogether. They are wired into the human experience. Especially when we step into the arena of growth, creativity, love, or any arena that's meaningful to our souls. Trying to eradicate fears is a futile game of resistance. The only true path is to allow them to exist while persisting to take action aligned with your bravest self. Anyway, to let the fears flow through you, not avoiding them but not believing in them. To feel the sensations of fear as temporary experiences, giving them space to be present without using them as a stop sign. This is what the most fearless people do. They don't pretend not to feel fear. They simply don't let it grip or paralyze them. They push forward consistently, even uncomfortably, while feeling the full human experience of fear, self-doubt, anxiety, and letting those emotions pass through their courage. Courage is a practice, not an inherent trait. That's the distinction that will allow you to slay your fears and reclaim the bold, vibrant life your spirit craves. You learn to make fear your companion by no longer resisting or buying into its deceptions. You keep it alongside you as you doggedly march forward anyway, chipping away at the limits that have caged you through consistent brave action. Does this mean you'll never feel scared again once you master this approach? Of course not. That would be unrealistic and frankly, kind of boring. Fear is a fundamental part of the tapestry of human emotion and consciousness. To rid yourself of it entirely is to rid yourself of the full range of experiences that make life zesty and stimulating. What it does mean, however, is that you reach a point where fear no longer runs the show, 
where it loses its power to dictate your actions or keep you trapped in the dugout while others live out their brave callings on the, ah, uh, field. You stop accepting fear as a reasonable excuse for playing small. You learn instead to dance with it, to follow its energy and momentum rather than being dragged under its weight. This is true courage, not eliminating fear altogether, but allowing its existence while calling on your bravery to persistently take action in its presence, to charge courageously at the goals that set your spirit on fire, running parallel with your fears for as long as they choose to accompany you on the path. To live at such a heightened frequency of bravery that fear is rendered an impotent trunk and shadow trailing behind you. Of course, this level of courage is not developed overnight. It's cultivated through a steadfast commitment to the daily practice of feeling your fears as they arise, then acting bravely anyway. Like building any muscle, it requires showing up and doing the inner and outer reps, even when you don't feel like it. Those heart-pounding, sweaty palm moments of staring a major fear in the face and leaning into it, that's where your bravery building happens. That first cold call to a prospect, that launching ceremony for your new business, that heart-bearing admission of love to your romantic interest. With each facing of those monumental fear experiences and refusal to back down, your courage gets a little stronger. But just as importantly, the small feats of bravery in daily life also hone the courage muscle. Whether it's raising your hand to ask a question when it scares you a little, or introducing yourself to someone intimidating at a social gathering. The seemingly trivial fears you face plant the seeds for boldness to bloom in your biggest, scariest attempts at the life you dream of. The key is stopping your ingrained tendency to avoid, resist, or numb out any situation that awakens the sensation of fear within you. Those fear feelings are like clouds passing through the sky of your consciousness. Don't try to chase them away. Just allow them to drift and morph and dissolve as you keep taking the next courageous action that aligns with your purpose. Give your fears less and less soil in which to take root and grow. Feed and water the flower of your courage instead. Through the repetition of brave thoughts, brave words, and brave deeds, no matter how large or small. Be the heroine or hero facing the fears and marching into each new battle. Do this enough times, and bravery will replace fear as your default operating system. You'll actually come to crave the feeling of facing scary circumstances, because you'll associate it with massive growth, success, freedom, and expansion in your life. Getting goosebumps or a racing heartbeat before a particularly bold move, will energize you rather than giving you an excuse to retreat. You'll cross the bridge to true fearlessness, that place of reclaiming your power, living authentically in your purpose, and creating the impact you're here to make. A world of possibility and adventure will have opened up to you, one previously closed off by the crippling limits of fear. Never forget that courage is always available to you as your superpower. You were born to lead the heroic life only you can live. So exit the prison of fear that has unnecessarily confined you. Take those fears, strap them to your back like a rocket booster, and let them propel you into the stratosphere of your biggest, bravest life. You've got this. The choice is yours. Live in fear or slay fear and live fully. Make the decision that will make you unstoppable. Kill your fears, take action, and thrive. Imagine standing at the edge of a vast, quiet forest. The kind of place where the silence is so profound you can hear your own heartbeat. In that moment of solitude, there's a feeling that might wash over you. A sense of clarity and peace that's hard to find in the hustle and bustle of daily life. This feeling, this power of being alone, is what I want to talk about today. Many people view solitude as something to be avoided. A state that signifies loneliness or isolation. But I'm here to tell you that being alone has an incredible, often untapped power that can lead to profound personal growth, creativity, and understanding. It's in those quiet moments away from the noise of the world that we truly get to know ourselves, to listen to our inner voice, and to discover what really makes us tick. You see, in our hyper-connected world, we're rarely without company, whether it's physically being with others or virtually through the constant pings of our smartphones and the endless scroll of social media. We're always on, always reachable, and because of that, we've lost something precious, the ability to be truly alone with our thoughts. But here's a truth I've come to realize. Embracing solitude can be one of the most powerful choices you ever make. It's in those moments of being alone that we can reflect on our lives, our decisions, and our dreams. We can clear away the clutter that fills our days and focus on what's truly important, what drives us, and what we hope to achieve. 
Now, I understand that for some, the idea of seeking out solitude might feel uncomfortable, even daunting. We live in a society that often equates being alone with being lonely. But there's a significant difference between the two. Loneliness is a feeling of sadness about being alone, while solitude is a chosen state of being alone without being lonely. It's in solitude that we find space to breathe, to dream, and to grow. Think back to a time when you had a breakthrough idea or a moment of clarity. Chances are, it came to you in a moment of solitude. Maybe you were taking a walk, enjoying a quiet morning cup of coffee, or simply sitting and thinking. These moments are precious. They are the fuel for our creativity, our motivation, and our personal development. I want to explore how embracing solitude can transform your life, just as it has transformed the lives of countless successful individuals before us. These are the moments that shape us, that define our path, and ultimately lead us to our greatest achievements. Consider how we can make space for solitude in our own lives. It's not about isolating ourselves or shunning the company of others. Rather, it's about finding a balance, allowing ourselves the time and space to be alone with our thoughts, to recharge, and to reconnect with what truly matters. And with that understanding, we're poised to delve deeper into how solitude not only benefits us personally, but how it also enhances our creativity, our emotional balance, and our decision-making skills. How the quiet moments of being alone can be the most loudly transformative of our lives. In this ever-spinning world, where our lives are interwoven with the threads of technology and constant communication. The art of solitude becomes a treasure buried under the sands of notifications, emails, and social media updates. The irony of our times is that while we are more connected than ever before, the depth of our connections often feels shallower. It's as if we're skimming the surface of a vast ocean without ever diving in to explore its depths. This brings us to a critical juncture where understanding solitude in this connected world becomes not just important, but essential for our well-being and personal growth. Imagine for a moment that each ping, each buzz of your phone, is a tiny anchor tethering you to the shore of constant engagement. With enough anchors, it becomes challenging to sail into the tranquil waters of solitude, where true self-reflection and growth occur. It's here, in these quiet waters, away from the cacophony of our connected lives, that we find the space to ask ourselves the fundamental questions. Who am I? What do I want from life? What are my deepest values and aspirations? You see, the journey into solitude is not about disconnecting from the world in a physical sense. It's about disconnecting from the distractions that prevent us from connecting with ourselves on a deeper level. It's about creating a sanctuary within, where the only voices we hear are our own thoughts and the gentle whispers of our intuition. This sanctuary becomes a place of power, a place from which we can emerge refreshed, refocused, and realigned with our true purpose. However, making room for solitude in our lives is not always easy. It requires intentionality. It requires us to set boundaries around our time and our attention, to recognize that every moment spent in aimless scrolling is a moment stolen from our journey of self-discovery. It requires us to be brave, to face ourselves without the distractions, and to listen to what our inner voice is saying. This may sound daunting, but the rewards are immeasurable. With solitude, we find the clarity that is often obscured by the noise of everyday life. We find creativity that blooms in the spaces where our thoughts are free to wander without interruption. We find strength in our own company, learning that while the world outside is full of wonders, there's an entire universe within us just waiting to be explored. So, as we navigate this connected world, let's not forget the power of disconnecting. Let's remember that the path to knowing the world around us starts with knowing the world within us. Let's make solitude a priority, not just as a refuge from the noise, but as a sacred space where we can grow, dream, and become the best versions of ourselves. Let's delve into the tangible benefits of embracing solitude, how it can transform not just our inner lives, but how it can enhance our creativity, our emotional balance, and our ability to make clear, conscious decisions. How, by making space for solitude, we can bring more to our relationships, our work, and our community, enriching not just our own lives, but the lives of those around us. In our journey through life, embracing solitude unfolds a myriad of benefits, akin to discovering a hidden garden teeming with the richest flora. It's in the quietude of our own company that we unearth treasures of self-awareness, creativity, 
emotional balance, and sharpen decision-making. This exploration into the sanctity of solitude reveals the profound impact it can have on our personal and professional lives. Firstly, consider the realm of self-awareness and personal growth. Solitude acts as a mirror, reflecting the most intimate parts of our being back to us. It's in these moments of quiet reflection that we can ask ourselves the most profound questions about who we are, what we truly desire, and what we stand for. This introspection is invaluable. It's akin to plotting a course on a map before setting out on a voyage. Without it, we're merely drifting ships without a compass. By cultivating a practice of spending time alone, we give ourselves the opportunity to align our actions with our deepest values, ensuring that the life we're building is one that resonates with the core of our being. Now let's shift our gaze to the wellspring of creativity that solitude nurtures. Imagine for a moment that your mind is a sky and your thoughts are clouds passing through. In the hustle of daily life, these clouds can become a storm, chaotic and unrelenting. But in solitude the sky clears, allowing the sun, your creativity, to shine brightly. It's in this space of uncluttered thought that our best ideas often come to us, seemingly out of nowhere. This isn't coincidence, it's the product of giving our minds the freedom to wander without aim, to connect disparate dots, and to conceive ideas that can change the course of our lives, or perhaps even the world. Emotional balance too is a gift of solitude. In the silence of being alone, we can process our emotions without the external influences that so often steer our feelings in one direction or another. This emotional processing is not a sign of weakness, but of profound strength. It allows us to face our fears, to heal from our wounds, and to emerge more resilient than before. Just as a tree needs the quiet of winter to rest and gather strength for the spring, our hearts and minds need solitude to find peace and balance in the challenges of life. Furthermore, the clarity that solitude brings enhances our decision-making capabilities. In the solitude of our own company, away from the cacophony of voices telling us what we should or shouldn't do, we find the clarity to make decisions that are in our best interest. It's like standing atop a mountain, surveying the landscape below. From this vantage point, the path forward becomes clear. This clarity leads to decisions that are not just reactive responses to the world around us, but proactive steps towards a future we've consciously chosen. As we embrace solitude, we find that its benefits ripple outward, enhancing not just our own lives but also the lives of those around us. By becoming more self-aware, we become more authentic in our interactions. Our creativity not only enriches our lives but can inspire and motivate those around us. Our emotional balance allows us to be a calm presence for others in the storm of life. And our clear decision-making ensures that the steps we take forward are thoughtful and deliberate, setting a positive example for others to follow. The exploration of solitude and its myriad benefits naturally leads to a question. How do we weave this golden thread of solitude into the intricate tapestry of our daily lives? This question is especially pertinent in our fast-paced, always-connected world, where moments of true solitude can seem as rare as finding a pearl in the ocean, yet with intention and a bit of creativity. We can carve out oases of solitude that refresh our spirits and reignite our inner fires. The first step in incorporating solitude into our lives is to recognize its value. Just as a gardener understands the importance of sunlight and water for growth, we must appreciate solitude as essential nourishment for our souls. With this recognition, the motivation to seek solitude becomes stronger, and we begin to see opportunities for solitude that we may have overlooked before. One effective strategy is setting boundaries around our time and space. This might mean designating certain hours as digital free times where smartphones, computers and televisions are turned off, allowing us to disconnect from the digital world and reconnect with ourselves. It's astonishing how quiet the world becomes when we mute the constant noise of emails, social media notifications, and the endless stream of information. In this silence, we find the space to breathe, think, and simply be. Another powerful approach is to establish solitude rituals that become sacred parts of our daily or weekly routines. This could be a morning walk before the rest of the world wakes up, a few moments of meditation or journaling before bed, or a weekly retreat to a favorite quiet spot in nature. These rituals become sanctuaries of peace and reflection that we can look forward to, knowing that in these moments, we are nurturing our deepest selves. The practice of a digital detox, even if just for a few hours each week, can be transformative. By consciously choosing to step away from the digital world, 
we give ourselves the gift of presence. This time becomes an invitation to engage in activities that nourish us on a deeper level, such as reading, painting, playing a musical instrument, or simply sitting in contemplation. These activities, free from the distractions of technology, can be profoundly satisfying and rejuvenating. Engaging in reflective practices like journaling is another strategy to deepen our relationship with solitude. Journaling offers a way to converse with ourselves, to ask questions, and to listen to the answers that bubble up from the wellspring of our inner wisdom. This practice can be a powerful tool for self-discovery, helping us to clarify our thoughts and feelings, celebrate our successes, and navigate challenges with greater insight and resilience. Moreover, embracing solitude doesn't mean we must always be stationary. Finding solitude and movement through activities like hiking, cycling, or even long aimless walks can be incredibly fulfilling. These solitary movements allow us to process our thoughts and emotions rhythmically, often leading to clarity and insights that elude us in stillness. As we integrate these strategies into our lives, we find that solitude becomes not just a practice, but a cherished companion on our journey. It becomes a source of strength, creativity, and inner peace that enriches all aspects of our lives. Our relationships become more meaningful because we bring a fuller, more present self to them. Our work becomes more inspired as we tap into deeper wells of creativity. And most importantly, our relationship with ourselves becomes more compassionate and understanding. As we navigate the journey of integrating solitude into our lives, it's inevitable that we'll encounter challenges along the way. These obstacles, however, are not insurmountable barriers, but rather stepping stones that lead us to a deeper understanding and appreciation of the power of being alone. The key lies in recognizing these challenges for what they truly are, opportunities to grow, to strengthen our resolve, and to deepen our commitment to this important practice. One of the most common challenges we face is the feeling of guilt, or the fear of missing out when we take time for ourselves. In a world that celebrates busyness as a badge of honor, choosing to step back can sometimes feel like we're going against the grain. But remember, choosing solitude is not a selfish act. Rather, it's a form of self-care that enables us to recharge and return to our daily lives with more to give to those around us. Another hurdle is the perception of solitude as being unproductive. In a results-driven society, spending time in reflection can seem counterintuitive to achieving our goals. Yet history is replete with examples of great thinkers, innovators, and leaders who attributed their breakthroughs and successes to periods of solitude. By embracing solitude, we tap into our deepest wells of creativity and problem-solving abilities, often finding solutions to challenges that seemed insurmountable in the midst of noise and distraction. For many, the challenge of finding solitude in a crowded and connected world can feel particularly daunting. Our homes, workplaces, and even public spaces are filled with the buzz of conversation, the hum of technology, and the constant pull of social obligation. Yet the strategy lies in identifying pockets of solitude within the rhythm of our daily life. It might be waking up a few minutes earlier to enjoy the quiet of the morning, taking a solitary walk during lunch, or finding a secluded spot to pause and breathe deeply during the day. Solitude doesn't always require long stretches of time. Even brief moments can provide a refreshing pause in our busy lives. Moreover, the journey toward embracing solitude often involves confronting our own inner fears and anxieties about being alone. It's not uncommon to encounter resistance from within, a nagging voice that fills the silence with doubts and fears. Facing these internal challenges requires patience and compassion toward ourselves. It's a process of learning to be comfortable in our own company, to enjoy our own thoughts and dreams, and to find peace in the quiet. In essence, overcoming the challenges in seeking solitude is as much about changing our external circumstances as it is about transforming our internal landscape. It's about making peace with being alone, recognizing the immense value that solitude brings to our lives, and understanding that the journey itself is an integral part of our growth and development. Let's remember that each challenge we overcome brings us closer to our true selves, to a place of greater clarity, creativity, and peace. These challenges are opportunities to deepen our practice of solitude knowing that on the other side lies a richer, more fulfilling life. In our exploration of solitude and its profound impact, let's draw inspiration from real-life success stories where embracing solitude has been a cornerstone for transformation and breakthroughs. These stories serve not just as evidence of solitude's power, but as beacons of motivation, 
illustrating how moments of quiet reflection can lead to monumental achievements in one's personal and professional life. Consider the story of Elizabeth, an aspiring writer who struggled for years to get her work published. Surrounded by rejection letters and battling self-doubt, she decided to retreat into solitude, spending a year in a remote cabin in the woods. This period of solitude was not about running away, but about running toward her inner voice, away from the noise that drowned it out. In the silence of nature, she found the clarity and focus she needed, and it was there, amidst the whispering pines, that she penned her breakthrough novel. Not only did it become a bestseller, but it also won her prestigious awards, proving that the clarity gained in solitude can indeed turn dreams into reality. Then there's Michael, a tech entrepreneur whose early ventures met with failure after failure. The constant noise of Silicon Valley, with its relentless hustle and competitive chatter, left him feeling lost and directionless. Choosing to embrace solitude, Michael took a sabbatical, traveling to a quiet village where technology was scarce and the pace of life was slower. It was in this environment, free from the pressures of the tech world, that the idea for a revolutionary new app came to him. Returning from his journey, Michael developed his app, which went on to change the way we interact with our devices. His story is a testament to how stepping away from the crowd can give us the space to see where true opportunities lie. And let's not forget about Sarah, a corporate lawyer who was on the brink of burnout from the relentless demands of her job. Realizing she needed a change, Sarah began to carve out periods of solitude, starting her day with an hour of silence before sunrise. This simple practice transformed her life, giving her the mental clarity to reevaluate her career and the courage to pursue her passion for environmental law. Today, Sarah is not only more fulfilled, but is also making a significant impact in the fight against climate change. Her journey illustrates how solitude can be a powerful tool for personal realignment and discovering one's true calling. These stories are not just narratives of success. They are reminders of the transformative power of solitude. Elizabeth, Michael and Sarah each faced a crossroads. A moment where the path forward was unclear. It was in solitude that they found their answers, their creativity, and ultimately their success. As we reflect on these stories, let us remember that solitude is not merely the absence of noise, but the presence of a profound opportunity for growth and discovery. Whether we seek innovation, creativity, or a deeper understanding of our purpose, solitude can inspire us to embrace our own moments of solitude. Within them lies the potential to shape our destiny. The exploration of solitude and its myriad benefits reveals a vital understanding. The true essence of solitude isn't about withdrawing from the world, but about how we can return to our social lives recharged, with more to offer to ourselves and those around us. The path forward is not choosing solitude over social life or vice versa, but in weaving them together into a rich tapestry that adds depth and color to our existence. Imagine solitude and social life as two dancers, each with their own unique steps and rhythm. Alone, they are captivating, but together they perform a dance that is far more beautiful and intricate. Solitude allows us to retreat, reflect, and reconnect with our inner selves, while our social life gives us the stage to express, share, and engage with the world around us. The secret lies in mastering the art of transitioning between these two dancers, knowing when it's time to step back for solitude and when to step forward into social life. This integration begins with the recognition that solitude enriches our social interactions. By spending time alone, we cultivate a deeper understanding of ourselves and our values. This self-awareness makes us more authentic and present in our relationships. We become better listeners, more empathetic friends and partners, and more engaging colleagues because we bring our whole selves to these interactions, not just the parts worn smooth by societal expectations. Integrating solitude with social life means recognizing the value of quality over quantity. In a world that often measures social success by the number of connections or followers one has, solitude teaches us to cherish the depth of our connections. It's about investing in relationships that truly matter, that challenge us to grow, and that support us in our journey toward becoming the best versions of ourselves. Creating a balance between solitude and social life also requires setting intentional boundaries. This might mean being mindful of how we spend our time, using activities that align with our values, and being willing to say no to things that drain our energy. It's about prioritizing our need for solitude just as much as we do our social commitments, understanding that both are essential to our well-being. 
The path forward involves embracing the fluidity of life. There will be seasons when solitude is what we need most, and others when our social life takes precedence. The key is to remain adaptable, listening to the cues our mind and body give us about what we need at any given moment. Carry with you the understanding that solitude and social life are not at odds, but are complementary forces that, when balanced, can lead to a richer, more fulfilling life. Let this knowledge guide you in making choices that honor both your need for quiet reflection and your innate human desire for connection. Doing so, you not only enhance your own well-being, but also enrich your interactions with others, bringing a more present, authentic, and compassionate self to your relationships. The stories of those who have walked this path before us, individuals who found in solitude the clarity, creativity, and courage to change their lives and the world around them, serve as reminders that within the silence of solitude lies the potential for extraordinary growth and achievement. So, let us carry forward the lessons of solitude into every facet of our lives, integrating them with grace and intention. May we find in solitude a wellspring of strength and inspiration, and may we emerge from it with a renewed sense of purpose and possibility. The journey doesn't end here, it is just beginning. The path forward is yours to choose, and the steps you take, guided by the wisdom of solitude, have the power to lead you to a life of unparalleled depth and meaning. Good morning, dear friends. I invite you to take a moment to pause and contemplate the boundless potential that lies within the next 24 hours. Today is not just another ordinary day. It is a canvas waiting to be painted with the vibrant colors of possibility, adventure, and serendipity. As you sit here surrounded by the gentle hum of life unfolding around you, I want you to know that something truly extraordinary is on the horizon for each and every one of you. Imagine, if you will, that the universe has conspired to bring forth a series of events, encounters, and revelations that are tailor-made for your growth, fulfillment, and joy. Picture yourself walking through the day with a heightened sense of awareness, eagerly anticipating the magical moments that await you at every turn. Whether it's a chance encounter with a long-lost friend, an unexpected opportunity that propels you closer to your dreams, or a sudden insight that illuminates the path ahead, something extraordinary is poised to make its grand entrance into your life today. But here's the secret. You must be open to receiving it. You must approach the day with a sense of wonder, curiosity, and receptivity, ready to embrace whatever gifts the universe has in store for you. Set aside any doubts or limitations that may be holding you back, and instead allow yourself to bask in the infinite possibilities that abound in every moment. As you journey through the day, I encourage you to pay attention to the subtle whispers of the universe, the synchronicities, the signs, and the nudges that gently guide you toward your highest good. Trust in the wisdom of the universe, and know that everything that happens today is happening for you, not to you. So, my friends, let us embark on this adventure together with open hearts and open minds. Let us greet the day with a sense of excitement and anticipation, knowing that something extraordinary is just around the corner. Get ready to welcome the magic into your life, for today is your day, and something truly remarkable is going to happen to you. You are extraordinary. You are unique. The odds of there being someone exactly like you are more than 50,000 million to one. Every part of your body, according to anatomists, physiologists, and doctors, is different from anyone else who has ever lived. Your fingerprints are unique. Even your footprints and earprints are different. You are unlike anyone else. Self-knowledge begins by accepting that you are a unique and special individual, and that you have the ability to do something wonderful with your life. That said, you are also like everyone else in relation to certain basic principles. Throughout human history, the smartest men and women who have ever lived have sought answers to the question of the human dilemma. What can people do to change the quality of their lives, their relationships, and their results? Great philosophers, metaphysicians, and scholars have pondered this sometimes for their entire lives. In this century, I know men and women who have spent 10, 20, 30, 40, and even 50 years studying success and achievement to discover rules and general principles that we can apply to be more successful. The first thing we must begin with in this whole course, the psychology of achievement, is that you are a mental being. The only thing that truly makes you unique is your mind. Everything else you share with a horse or a pig, your mind is what makes you unique. Your body simply carries your mind around. Just as electricity follows laws of electricity, physics follows laws of physics, and nature follows laws of nature, 
There are certain mental laws that determine everything that happens to you. These mental laws are as inexorable as the laws of gravity. They work 100% of the time. The first mental principle, and we will return to it again and again, is what we call the law of control. The law of control is very simple. It's a basic law, and we will return to it again and again. It simply says that you feel good about yourself. You feel positive about yourself, to the extent that you feel you are in control of your own life. Or you feel negative about yourself to the extent that you feel you are not in control of your own life. You just have to look at your life today and ask yourself, in what parts of your life do you feel better? In what parts of your life do you feel more in control? You will find that those are the places where you are happiest. Since the ultimate human good is to achieve a state of happiness expressed in mental peace, health, love, and relationships, control is absolutely essential. Psychologists call this the difference between an internal locus of control, which is feeling that you are in charge of your own life, versus an external locus of control, which means feeling that something outside of you, whether it's your debts, your relationships, your work, or your health, in some way is controlling you. In fact, Research into locus of control, and there are many tests you can take to determine where you are on this graph in terms of locus of control, and in what areas of your life you feel more and less in control. People with a very high internal locus of control are high performance people. They are more successful, they are more self-determined, and they are happier. Many of the things we are trying to do in this course are to give you a much greater sense of control, of being in charge of every aspect of your life. Control begins with your thoughts. Interestingly, your thoughts, what you think about things, and how you think, determine your values, determine what is happening inside you. Once stored, your thoughts determine your feelings. It's how you think about something that determines your feelings, whether you're happy or unhappy, scared or confident. Your feelings then determine your actions. We start with the law of control, saying that the key to success is feeling that you are the master of your own destiny, that you are behind the wheel of your own life that you are in charge of your life. By taking complete and total control over your thoughts, your thoughts will control your feelings, your feelings will control your actions, and your actions, always remember, your actions, will determine your success or your lack of success. The law of control is important. Now, in contrast to the law of control, we have what is called the law of chance. The law of chance is really a metaphysical principle. It's just a law, like a traffic law, or like a legal law. To the extent that we consistently live in accordance with it, the law of chance is what about 80% of the population lives more or less. The law of chance simply states that by not planning, you are planning to fail. Not planning is planning to fail. Most people don't believe they live according to this. But if you look at their lives, you'll see that it's true. Not planning means planning for failure. These are the people who say, well, it's not what you know, it's who you know. It's being in the right place at the right time. It's luck. It's the luck of the draw, and so on. These are individuals who, feeling that their lives are controlled by forces outside themselves, lack clear plans, lack clear goals, don't work persistently and steadily every day to achieve something they want, and their lives simply seem adrift and going in circles, like a rudderless ship. A person like a ship without a rudder, a person without a central plan, is a person who has very little control. A person who feels that they are indeed out of control of their life, as if they are falling through space without a place to stop, and these people are invariably unhappy. The reason people are negative today, the reason people are unhappy, the reason people are sick and frustrated, the reason people don't reach their full potential in life, is that most of them live according to this law of chance. And by doing so, they don't have a clear sense of control over their lives, they don't have a sense of inner peace, they don't have a sense of happiness and so on. We will show you how to free yourself from the personal law of chance permanently. Now the next law is what is called the law of cause and effect. The law of cause and effect says that for every effect in your life, there is a specific cause. Everything that happens in the universe happens for a reason. That nothing happens by accident. That failure does not happen by accident. And success does not happen by accident. That happiness or lack of happiness is the result of cause and effect relationships. If we have an effect in your life that you want more of, whether it's more success, more money, more happiness, better health, you can trace it back to a cause, and what you do is repeat and duplicate that cause. If you have an effect in your life that you want less of, 
If you have problems or difficulties, you can also trace it back to a cause. All progress in human life and in society comes from identifying the causes of what we want more or less of and changing those causes. The law of cause and effect is the iron law of the universe. It's a law that you'll come back to time and time again. And many of our laws are paraphrasing of the iron law, also called the law of sowing and reaping. What you sow, that you shall also reap. But the iron law, the law of cause and effect, gives us a complete sense of control. If we believe that there is a cause and effect relationship, that everything happens for a reason, then we have a tremendous feeling of control in our lives. We can identify the causes, duplicate them, and make our lives whatever we want. The most important application of the law of cause and effect is this. Thoughts are causes and conditions are effects. Thoughts are simply causes and conditions are simply effects. The starting point of everything is your thoughts about something. It's your thoughts about a job, your thoughts about a relationship, your thoughts about your health, your thoughts about your future. Your thoughts become causative agents, and conditions become effects. If you want to change any of the conditions in your life, you must change the thoughts that precede those conditions. You must change what is happening in your mind. Fortunately, there is only one thing in the entire universe over which you have complete control, and it is your thoughts. If you take total control of your thoughts and keep them focused on what you desire, making them positive causes, the conditions or effects will take care of themselves with the inexorability of a law of nature. The next law is what is called the law of belief. The law of belief simply says that whatever you believe with feeling, and this is the key, conviction, and the more emotion you put into a belief, it becomes your reality. It becomes your reality because you will always act consistently with your beliefs. In fact, your entire reality at this moment is simply an external reflection of your most intensely held beliefs. If you believe something positive, or if you believe something negative, or as Henry Ford said, whether you think you can do something or you think you can't, you're right. Our beliefs shape our realities. To the extent that we believe something to be true, our beliefs act as a kind of filter, screening out any information that is inconsistent with our beliefs. We have a deep-seated desire inside of us to remain consistent, so we always try to see, rationalize, and interpret our world to be consistent with what we have already decided to believe. We develop what are called scotomus, a term in psychology that simply means we develop blind spots. We don't see opportunities and are convinced there are no opportunities. We don't see possibilities for success if we don't believe success is possible for us. However, if we start changing our beliefs, we start changing our realities. Let me give you an example. A few years ago, after conducting a variety of experiments, Dr. Rosenthal concluded that the expectations teachers had about students were having a tremendous effect on their ability to learn and their grade averages. He conducted a series of experiments, and one of them was very significant. At the beginning of the school year, he went to the San Francisco Bay Area, and the principal called in three teachers. These teachers were told that due to their excellence in teaching, they had been singled out as the top three teachers in the school, and would be assigned 30 students each from the brightest students in the school, as identified by IQ tests. By the end of the last semester, they would be allowed to teach these students for the entire year. And it was estimated that according to experts, these students would increase their academic performance by an average of 20 to 30 percent over the course of that school year. Now the teachers were told that one of the conditions was that they should not tell the students, and they should not tell their parents, but they should continue teaching in the same way. The classes were carefully monitored to ensure they taught in the same way as before but only they would know that they had been assigned 30 bright students each to teach for the entire year. The teachers were delighted, excited, and worked hard with these students. They spent time after school with them and became much more involved in teaching than they had been before. At the end of the school year, surprisingly, these three classes not only led the school, but the entire school district in academic achievement. At the end of the year, the three teachers were called in, sat down, and were told, you've had a good year. To which they responded affirmatively. They were told it was great that these children were so eager to learn. Then they were told, maybe we should tell them the truth. They explained that this was an experiment, and at the beginning of the school year, they randomly selected the names of 90 children from the entire school population and assigned them to their classes. They didn't even know what their IQ was. The teachers were amazed and asked, how was it possible for them to do so well? They were told they were simply the top three teachers in the school. 
This story illustrates what is called a double-blind experiment. They kept everything constant except for the expectations. The expectations about the teachers were explicit. We believe they are excellent teachers. The stories we've just explored highlight the incredible power of expectations in shaping outcomes, whether it's in the classroom or in our personal lives. The teachers' implicit expectations of their students unleashed hidden potentials and led to remarkable transformations, demonstrating the immense influence that expectations can have on performance and achievement. But let's zoom out for a moment and consider the broader context of expectations in our lives. It's not just our teachers who hold expectations for us. Perhaps even more influential are the expectations instilled in us by our parents. From the moment we enter this world, our parents' hopes, dreams, and beliefs about us begin to shape our sense of self and our aspirations for the future. Research has shown that our parents' expectations, whether positive or negative, have a profound impact on our behavior and choices throughout our lives. If we were raised in an environment where we were nurtured, supported and encouraged to reach for the stars, we are more likely to internalize those positive expectations and strive for greatness. Conversely, if we grew up in an environment filled with criticism, doubt, and low expectations, we may find ourselves held back by self-doubt and fear of failure. So I urge you to reflect on your own upbringing and the expectations that were placed upon you by your parents. What were their hopes and dreams for you? Did they believe in your potential? Or did they inadvertently sow seeds of doubt and limitation? And most importantly, how are those expectations influencing you today? As we continue our journey of exploration and discovery, remember that awareness is the first step towards empowerment. By understanding the role that expectations play in our lives, we can begin to challenge and reshape those beliefs that no longer serve us and pave the way for a future filled with limitless possibilities. Well, this brings us to the critical role of expectations in your life. The first part of expectations in your life, number one, and where expectations affect you, is in your parents' expectations. We have found that we tend as adults to try to fulfill or fail our parents' expectations throughout our lives. If our parents were strong, supportive, loving, kind, encouraging, and believed in us throughout our lives, we will unconsciously strive to live a life consistent with those expectations. If our parents were critical, condemning, and complained about our grades and so on, we will find that throughout our lives, we tend to hold back. So be aware of that. What were your parents' expectations? Were they positive or negative? Did they drive you or discourage you? And how much are they affecting you today? The second area of expectations is your boss's expectations. In all of our studies, especially in studies on excellence in organizations, we have found that bosses with high expectations have high performance work environments. Now, if you work for a boss who is negative, critical, and condemning, if you work for a boss who has negative expectations or a negative attitude, your performance is likely to be very low. In fact, if you look at the course of your work career, you will find that the times in your life that you have enjoyed the most are working under a boss who had high positive expectations of you and your ability. Isn't that right? The third area of expectations is the expectations you have of others, especially your children, your spouse or partner, especially your subordinates or the people who look up to you. We are deeply affected by the opinions of anyone we respect and the attitudes towards us of anyone we respect. And if you have high positive expectations of the people around you, especially your children, they will rise to meet those expectations. So, the basic rule regarding this is to always expect good things from others, in word and deed. Continually tell them, I believe in you. And the fourth area of expectations is the expectations you have of yourself. Ultimately, these are the most powerful. If you have high positive expectations of yourself, you will be amazed at what it will mean for your life. Always expect the best. Always expect the best. And here's a little exercise I learned from one of my graduates at one of our seminars in life. He found that starting each day with this simple exercise and telling himself, I believe something wonderful is going to happen to me today. I believe something wonderful is going to happen to me today. I believe something wonderful is going to happen to me today. This little exercise completely changed his attitude. He spent the whole day with the attitude of someone with a confident expectation. Everything that happened during the day, he thought, maybe this is something wonderful that is going to happen to me. And you know that if you do this, if you say before going to sleep, 
I believe something wonderful is going to happen to me tomorrow. Then if you say when you wake up in the morning, I believe something wonderful is going to happen to me today. And if throughout the day you say, I believe something wonderful is going to happen to me. You will find that when you go to sleep the next night and try this today, it's a very powerful exercise. It sounds a bit cheesy, but it's a very powerful exercise. If you try it, you will find that you won't be able to think of all the wonderful things that have happened to you. You will simply be amazed that your parking spaces will open up, your friends will call you, and you will receive checks in the mail. Your life will be a series of positive and happy experiences. So always expect the best. I believe something wonderful is going to happen to me today. And by the inexorability of a law, of nature, I can assure you that it will happen. It has happened to thousands and thousands and thousands of our graduates who will literally amaze you with the effect of this little cheesy exercise. The last law we will talk about in this session is called the Law of Correspondence. The Law of Correspondence says, as is within, so is without. As is within, so is without. And what it simply means is that your outer world is a mirror, and that's probably the best word. Your outer world is a mirror, and it simply reflects what is happening in your inner world. Your outer world is the result of your inner world. What is happening inside determines what is happening outside. If you want to change your outer world, you have to change your inner world. That means you can look at your words, you can look at your level of health. What's happening in terms of your physical health is largely determined by what's happening in your mind. What's happening in your relationships is the most perfect example, because you find that when you feel good inside, your relationships are fluid. When you feel negative or stressed inside, your relationships go wrong. Your relationships are a reflection of the image in the mirror of the quality of your own personality. You can tell how healthy your personality is by looking at the relationships. If you change your inner life, you change your life. And as the day draws to a close, take a moment to reflect on the magic that has unfolded before your very eyes. Perhaps you encountered a stranger who offered a word of wisdom that resonated deep within your soul. Maybe you stumbled upon an opportunity that seemed tailor-made for your aspirations and dreams. Or it could be that you experienced a moment of profound insight that illuminated the path ahead with newfound clarity and purpose. Whatever the case may be, know that these are not mere coincidences. They are gifts from the universe, orchestrated with love and precision to guide you along your journey of self-discovery and fulfillment. So embrace these moments with gratitude and an open heart, for they are the building blocks of a life lived in harmony with the rhythm of the cosmos. As you drift off to sleep tonight, carry with you the knowledge that you are a beloved child of the universe, blessed with infinite potential and boundless opportunities for growth and transformation. Rest easy, dear friend knowing that tomorrow holds even more magic in store for you. Good night, and may your dreams be filled with wonder and possibility.